I'm about to share the prompts that take typical chain of prompt problem solving from a 4% success rate to a 74% success rate. Don't just take my word for it, though. This comes straight from Google DeepMind scientists and researchers that work at Princeton University. So I'll share two examples. First example is for marketing strategies. And the second example is for people who are interested in code. And as you can see from my screen over here, we already have it pulled up. But before I get started, I wanted to make sure I cover what tree of thought prompting is. So research paper right over here, we have tree of thought, deliberate problem solving with large language models. So as you can see, we have Princeton and Google DeepMind right here. They are absolutely killing it. I've tested this out, and it works so well. So tree of thought, what is it? Let me read this out for you. So the tree of thought has four steps. The first step is the brainstorming phase, and that's where you basically say, I have a problem related to blank. Could you brainstorm three solutions to solve it? Now, while I'm going to use an example that's all about problem solving for this specific context, this is the kind of way that you should be constructing your prompts. It doesn't mean that you have to solve a problem. It could just be creating a blog outline or whatever it is you want to do. So brainstorming phase, I have a problem related to, what, uh, to blank. Could you brainstorm three solutions for me? Next is the evaluation phase. Evaluation phase is for each of the proposed solutions. Evaluate their potential. Consider the pros and cons, the initial effort that is needed, implementation difficulty, potential challenges, expected outcomes, assign a probability of success and a confidence level to each based on these factors. So those are the first parts that we're going to cover right now. I'll cover the other parts as we go through them. Let's dig in. So I'm going to tell it right now, hey, act as a machine learning expert. You are skilled in all programming languages, and you have a deep understanding of OpenAI. I have a problem. I need your help. I want you to build a tool inside of Google Sheets that allows me to populate my Google Sheets database. The first column will contain the data and all the other columns that all the columns are related to. Each column header is an attribute of the column A header. Each row adjacent to column A's rows need to have the data filled out. I don't know whether I should use OpenAI, Python, or some other programming language to make this work. I have no coding background. I want the easiest solution that takes the least amount of time. Could you brainstorm three solutions? Sure, I could do that. So it gives us Google Sheets JavaScript. And as you can see right here, it tells us it's a built-in programming language based on JavaScript. And this is the first phase, right? We want to just get the solutions going. It doesn't matter uh, that it's vague. It's just stating solutions. So what I'm seeing here is we have Google Script. We have Python or some sort of uh, G spread panda library and Zapier or an automation tool sometimes. So it tells us down here, what, interestingly enough, it did not bring up OpenAI, but it said in the list, it said it's a powerful tool for natural language processing tasks. However, for the task you've described, it might be overkill. So that's the reason why I didn't choose it. It believes it's overkill. And that's good to know. I didn't know that. So let's do the next thing. For each of these proposed solutions, evaluate their potential. Consider the pros and cons, the initial effort that is needed, implementation difficulty, potential challenges, and expected outcomes. So assign a probability of success and a confidence level to each of the options based on these factors. So you can tell it exactly what to evaluate based on whatever factors you want. That in and of itself, you'll, you'll get your money's worth out of this video. Just that. I know it's a free video, but it's worth your time. So sure, let's evaluate the solutions. And now it's going to say pros, direct integration, no need for the setup, cons, requires learning JavaScript, less flexible than Python, initial effort medium, implementation difficulty medium, potential challenges, debugging scripts can be tricky. See, here's the thing that this doesn't quite know. And you can still continue, continue to prompt it further. And you could say that I will debug. Any code debugging will happen inside of OpenAI. So do not worry, I don't know, about code debugging. You get the picture. The idea is just to give you an example. This is the structure. So Python, I'm not going to read this all out, guys, but it's awesome, easy to learn, very flexible. Cons, pros, cons, probability of success, our confidence levels, medium to high. Zapier, no coding, less flexible, low effort, limited to the apps and triggers that Zapier uh, provides, expected outcomes once set up, uh, blah, blah, blah. So this is great, at least for like, uh, I would say 
definitely manager level. This is going to be perfect for what a manager would be expected to be able to do, and probably a director. You might need to massage this a little bit further, but this is giving you the setup. So next we have for each solution, deepen that thought process. Generate potential scenarios, strategies for implementation, any necessary partnerships or resources, and how potential obstacles might be overcome. Also consider any unexpected outcomes and how they might be handled. And now it's going to give us different scenarios, implementation, partnership resources, <clears throat> how to overcome obstacles, and unexpected outcomes. If your script runs into an error, it might stop working. And please fix the issue. You'll need to monitor your script. All of these things, you can highlight and ask it to explain further if you want. So implementation strategy. Start by learning the basics of JavaScript and Google Apps Script. Then write a script that fetches your data and writes it into your sheet. Test and debug your script. Uh, Python, and I'll, I'll clarify at the end of this, but we go Python, we have Zapier, it gives us all of that. Then we have based on the evaluations and scenarios, rank the solutions in order of promise. So provide a justification for each ranking and offer any final considerations for each solution. So now we have number one at Python, number two Zapier, number three Google Script. Final considerations, remember to set up Python environment, make use of the extensive resources. Keep an eye on the limitations of Zapier, especially if your data needs uh, becomes more complex. Uh, then we have make sure to learn the basics of Java, Script, and Google Apps Scripts before diving into your project. Uh, remember the best solution depends on your personal comfort with learning new technologies. So if it tells us that, what we can say is I don't, at the very beginning, right, we can go up here and we can repeat this process. This is an iterative thing. Once you get your general structure right for the kinds of problems that you want to solve, then you can just save that prompt and just run with it. So, and, and for this video, I'm just putting uh, kind of a template up for you guys to use. Uh, let's keep going. Now we have, I'm gonna give you a specific example. This is my own thing now where I break away from just the normal tree of thought prompting. And I say, I'm gonna give you a specific example. I'd like you to provide the best solution for this example. I have a list of 8,000 whiskeys. I have a whis whiskeys back here, I like whiskey. And I want the distiller name, the region of the production, uh, price, alcohol percentage, and flavors. It's important to note that I don't have any specific websites or specific APIs I know of that can accomplish this task. This task. If you suggest scraping web pages, I need to know where to find that information. Boom, right here, gives it to you. And what's interesting is you can actually, with the web browsing plugin of ChatGPT, you can then say to research some of this stuff. Uh, I'm not going to go into that because I don't want this video to be too long. But as you can see, boom, has all the notes, has everything up here. It just prompt it out. Everything you could possibly want to do, just prompt it out. So if, for those that follow me, I share code sometimes, especially in the Facebook group. And if it doesn't make sense and I haven't had time to record a video, or let's say I have recorded a video and you still are curious, you're not quite sure what to do, I kid you not, do put it in this sort of tree of thought uh, prompting. and you'll be amazed, absolutely amazed. So let's keep going. That's for the tree of thought coding example. Now I'm gonna do the CMO role. Let's go to the very top. Act as a chief marketing officer of a SaaS company that sells AI tools. Your task is to provide answers to the user so their complex problems can be solved. Only respond with yes if you understand. So yes, great. Now I, I give it the problem. I'll read the problem and then I'll just kind of skim through. So I have this problem. I don't know the best marketing strategy to use to grow the company. How do I choose the correct solution? Here is some context to help you brainstorm. I have a small marketing budget. I have $5,000 a month that I can use. But this budget is shared with other initiatives outside of marketing. I'm the only one in the company that is in a marketing role. I spend all of my time improving the SaaS tool, communicating with users, which means I don't have time to do the marketing myself. I have intermediate skills in social media, advanced skills in SEO, advanced skills in paid advertising, beginner web dev skills, and I have advanced skills using ChatGPT. My business partner handles the hiring. Could you brainstorm three possible solutions for my marketing problem? Consider a variety of factors such as budget, my background, my time, and anything else that should be considered to make this decision. So you can construct this in a variety of ways, and the more detail you put into this, the better the output is going to be. So I just, you know, off the cuff, was type in and put this out there. So this works uh, to show and illustrate. Absolutely, I understand your situation. You can outsource to a marketing agency. That is actually a fair point to outsource to a marketing agency. Uh, if I chose that one, what I'd then want to say after I've read through all of this is, 
um, what are the, how should I find a marketing agency? What are the ways that I should evaluate a marketing agency? Yada, yada, yada. Are there any additional positions that I need to hire in order to uh, manage this relationship since I don't have enough time to communicate with this agency? You get the picture. Just throw out all the different scenarios that you have. Just get used to that. And it's not a big deal if you, it, it will take some time getting it set up, but if you've ever tried to research on your own, the amount of time that it takes to do this is outside of AI, it's a lot. So this is great. And it's great to have this for a meeting or something. You have a strategy meeting coming up, do this as a practice. And, or, <laughs> I just had this idea, Let's say I'm in a C-suite meeting and we're all having ideas and we all write our ideas down. I can use those ideas and have the AI evaluate each of those ideas and do this entire process. You get the picture, it's really powerful. Each of these solutions, you know, we can keep going. Outsource, here's the pros and cons, here's the pros and cons, great. Deepen the solution, perfect. And based on all these, here you go. So next, I wanted to just test it out just to see what happened. I said, you listed, where, does, where is this? Uh, implement, implementation strategies, right here. So I said, you listed that, I just pasted it in there. And I said, provide a list of tools that can automate marketing activities. I'm keeping it super vague. You should, if you really want this to work, say, provide a list of email marketing tools or a list of coding tools or you, you name it, just a list of tools, whatever it is. The more narrow when you're trying to expand, the better it will be. So keep that in mind when you're trying to do this. Always try to be as narrow as possible if you are really absolutely needing a highest quality response. So when I keep it just vague of overall marketing strategy, it's, it's, not, it's not a human. You know, it's, it doesn't quite get it. So I have WebPilot installed. If anyone has ever used this, um, basically it's just using the web. And now it's saying, all right, HubSpot, MailChimp, ActiveCampaign, great. But what I told it is I need tools that are cheap. Uh, my marketing budget is small. Provide the cheapest solution. That'll have the greatest impact. Now here we go here. Perfect. And they are right. HubSpot does have a free plan. So remember the best tool depends on your needs. That's it. You can do anything you want with this. The whole goal is Get it to iteratively go over and reevaluate and evaluate based on whatever you think is important. Uh, let me open up the study over here. So just to show you what this is, you can have and github.com. They have a little uh, repo with the code from this study. They also have the, there we go, solved four percent of task. Our method achieved a success rate of 74%. So. Absolutely awesome. Input, output, input, output. As you can see here, input, three, output, put, three. So super easy to do. Read this article before you go into the, uh, into the actual prompting. I mean, you do what you want, but a after you're trying to really improve this process, you're really going to want to read this paper. And uh, yeah, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for joining. The next video I'm going to talk about uh, different prompts that I've come up with to help with some on-page optimization and uh, different uh, a script as well. Um, I'm not sure which one I'll create next, but if you have any requests, just let me know in the comments. Uh, like and subscribe if you have not subscribed. That's the best way to help me out. That's the best way to make sure that I come up with more videos that can help you out. So if you want me to help you more, all you have to do is hit like, leave a comment, whatever it is. It could be something like you're ugly, Andrew. I, I don't care. <laughs> Try to insert some keywords in there too, though, for Google. But you can tell me I'm ugly if, you're, if you do that. Uh, other than that, though, that's it for this one.